it, it's, it's really a great honor and privilege to be president of the board. Uh, and I've been president for seven days, so I, I, it's a <laughs> wild term. Uh, I asked my wife, we've been going to unicorn shows for a long, long time, uh, and I said, you know, when we first started going, did you ever imagine in your wildest dreams that I would be president of the unicorn board? And she said, you're not in my wildest dreams. <laughs>
it's modern, it's bold, it's, it's in your face. Um, I, I love the unicorn because it's intimate. Uh, this spring someone was kind of proud, I went to see West Side Story and I got, I got seats in the eighth row. And, and I was thinking, we don't have an eighth row. <laughs> and it's not just, maybe we do, one, two, three. Um, it's not just the physical intimacy of the space, but it's the emotional, intellectual intimacy. Uh, when you say, I go back to Congo again, when, when an issue like genital mutilation and warlords in Congo and you're four feet away from it, that's in your face theater. And so when I think that when I think of the unicorn, I think of in your face theater. And I thank you so much because you say, I want in your face theater. Well, the unicorn is different. <laughs> it is the main reason why I have stayed here for 32 years. I have to do what's in my heart. I have to do what I believe in. When I am moved by a character or a story, I have to believe that you will be too. If we believe in and feel passionate about the work that we do, I cannot believe that everyone else will not feel that also. I have to take that risk to move people or to make people think or to offend them. <laughs> I can't choose a play from a catalog. I have to choose from what I see or what I read or sometimes from what I hear from one of my colleagues from across the country who I have grown to trust or rely on. In 1992, a little known new musical was opening at the Hartford stage in Connecticut. And I had heard about this play and I thought, we need to do this play at the Unicorn Theater. No one else will do this play in this city. It was about the family. It was about a husband and wife whose son was about to be bar mitzvahed when the husband leaves the wife and takes up with another man who ends up getting a mysterious disease and is taken care of by the lesbians from next door. How could I not? <laughs> I called the director, uh, Graciela Danielle, I talked to her and several people who were uh, working on the production, and I immediately sought out the rights to do this play. Now, this happened to be a bad year, a very difficult year for the arts in general. And in fact, we didn't even know if we were going to make it to the end of the season. Hmm. Not like the last two years have been, <laughs> although we had far fewer resources back then. So the board wondered if we shouldn't not do this big musical with a dozen people and a four-piece band and maybe try to do something a little less expensive, like with two people, two <laughs> little people. <laughs> but I knew we had to produce this play. And I knew I had to direct this play. And I knew we had to tell this story. So the board decided to take that risk with me. The play was called Falsetto Land. And right after we were given the rights, we and one other theater in the United States, the producers decided to take this play to Broadway. And no one else was allowed to do this play. But I had the rights. So we proceeded with the production. And the week before we opened, it won the Tony for Best Play. <laughs> and we sold out every performance for an unprecedented two months. And it was the greatest artistic and financial achievement that we had ever had. We made enough money with that show to completely wipe out our debt. It changed how people perceived the Unicorn Theater in this city. And it's because the unicorn listens to its heart. And we take risks and do things that no one else will do in this city. But that got me started thinking about, we need another stage. We need another theater so that when we have successful shows, we can extend the run. We need another theater so that we can develop new plays and have extra time for rehearsal and work with playwrights. 
So lo and behold, we got into theater. But working with new and contemporary theater is a blessing and a curse. We have to be willing to change depending on what kind of plays are being written that year. We have the space to create, but the needs of playwrights and artists to keep evolving. We need more development and rehearsal time. We need to have a more flexible space to accommodate them. We need to tear out these seats and put the stage wherever we need the stage. These are things that we need to do in the future. We need to be able to grow to ensure the future of the American theater. <laughs>